Jesus. Thank you, the King of glory. Thank you, the God of heaven and earth, our soon coming King, the El Shaddai, the God of grace, the God of honor, the God of mercy. We have come once more this night. We have come to seek your face. We have no other place to go but Jesus. Thank you, the King of glory. Thank you, the God of heaven and earth, our soon coming King, the El Shaddai, the God of grace, the God of honor, the God of mercy. We have come once more this night. We have come to seek your face. We have no other place to go but come, Jesus. Come, Jesus. Come, Jesus. You are the God of glory. You are the God of strength. This night, we want to encounter your strength, Lord. We want to encounter your Shekinah. Oh, Jesus. Be seated on the throne this day, that your people may know indeed that they have encountered you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you for honoring the cry of your children. Thank you for hearing our prayers. Blessed be your most holy name. In the name of Jesus, we cover the atmosphere with the blood of Jesus and we decree that no weapon formed against this gathering, against this salmon, shall ever prosper. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. My dear friends of Christ, my great pleasure this day to welcome every one of us to the hearts of Jesus and Mary Ministries. I am always so enlightened so filled with joy every time i find this golden opportunity to mount the pulpit to preach the gospel of jesus a mighty word the word of god and that word of god in the words of the psalmist we know that is the word that comes with the light and that light of god will never elude us tonight and may we be enlightened in the name of jesus Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for the word of God makes it clear to us in Psalm 119, verse 105, that the word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. So we can never walk into darkness when we carry the word of God. And so since Jesus, the incarnate word is here, may he take all the glory tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. My dear friends, we have a lot to cover this night, so we get into the business of this night. And I want to quickly uh, remind us to share this message, like the message, and do not fail to go to the comment section and uh, uh, declare your, your your intentions. Remember the words of Numbers 14, verse 28, that which I heard you say, that I will do. In other words, God is saying, I want to hear you know, the declarations of your mouth. <laughs> and I tell you, there is greater power in the declarations of our mouth. Let, let the sick say, I'm healed. Let the poor say, I am rich. This is declaration. And so tonight, we are decreeing that the presence of God will establish us in Jesus' gracious name. We pray. Thank you, Jesus. We cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. We cover our hearts with the blood of Jesus. And we are decreeing this night that the Lord who gathered us into this presence we take all glory and there shall be no interruption to what he wants to do in our lives tonight in jesus mighty name amen thank you jesus thank you lord and so friends of christ today i'm going to take us quickly to matthew chapter number 15 verse 21 to 28 and i'm going to be reading from the new revised standard version catholic edition i read 
Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she kept praying. She kept appealing and knelt before him saying, Lord, help me. Help me. He answered, it is not fair to take the children's bread or food and throw it to the dogs. Jesus said, she said rather, yes, Lord, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks and praise be to your most holy name. Amen. My dear friends, today I have come to share with us a message titled, Standing in Gap. Standing in Gap. You see, I want you to take pay attention to this message, really. I want to pay attention because the Lord wants to use this message to teach us something that is often ignored in the body of Christ. That we need to understand that the body of Christ, the body of believers, these are a people that gather in the name of the Lord to pray in the name of the lord and when we do that we know that our lord moves whether we are praying for ourselves or whether we are praying for somebody else when we do that the lord is glorified now pay attention again even to the message of today even from the gospel that i've just read they are pay attention and see that jesus uh bled this woman not because she came to jesus with her personal problem no she came to jesus with another person's problem pay attention that the bible message declared to us that you know it was her daughter that was demon possessed it was her daughter that was afflicted it was her daughter that was in pain terrible pain and only god knows how many years that this her child had been this pain i mean this woman had her own problems she had her own pains but she did not come to jesus on the merits of her troubles she came to jesus because of the problem or the troubles of her own daughter and mother friends in christ each time and every time that will come to jesus because of somebody else's problem because of the pain because of the the trouble the the, the calamity of somebody else that is standing in the gap that is standing in a gap. And we see the way this story of the Syrophoenician woman ended. That she came to Jesus with the problem of some other person, for some other, some other person with the problem of her daughter. Yet Jesus at the end was able to heal her daughter as though it was her daughter that came to Jesus. It means that, look, that when she came to Jesus, Jesus was seeing her daughter in the, in the mother. Jesus was seeing the very person who was in pain who was in trouble in the person of the mother and so when she came to jesus saying jesus have mercy on me for my daughter is afflicted is demon possessed and jesus saw her and showed mercy not only on her but on the daughter but i want to draw a case tonight that this night jesus is drawing us to something very important and that is the power of standing in the gap Standing in the gap is very important even as Christians because, look, we are not running this race just alone. We want to encourage some other person to be able to join the race. We want to encourage somebody else whose faith is weak to be able to come into this race so that all of us helping each other, supporting each other, we are able to come to Jesus so that we come to the feet of Jesus and honor him and love him. And that is one thing that the Silo Fresher woman continues to teach us today. 
Well, at the end of the story, we see that Jesus was pleased with this woman who came to him with faith. And Jesus said to her clearly in Matthew chapter number 15, we see at the end of the verse how Jesus told her that woman, great is your faith. And indeed, your daughter is healed. And as Jesus said it, that was how it was. For indeed, the daughter was healed instantly because she took the pain, she took the ordeal of her child to Jesus. What do you call that kind of situation? What do you call, you know, what's the name that you can give to someone who carry, carries another person's trouble, another person's pain to Jesus? It is nothing other than standing in the gap. Because we are standing in a gap each and every time we carry somebody else's problem and bring it to the Lord in prayer. And the way the Lord answered the prayer of this woman, this showed that the Lord himself, he wants us to stand in the gap for those who are in need. He wants us to stand in the gap for those who are weak. He wants us to stand in the gap for those who have no person to stand in the gap for them. And God is talking to parents tonight to stand in the gap even for their children her trouble I mean the trouble of the daughter the trouble of the daughter whose name was not even mentioned in the Bible this was the trouble that brought the mother to Jesus the mother had her own problems my friend but that was not what brought her to Jesus when we come to the Lord on behalf of another person, it is called standing in the gap. It is called intercession. And I tell you, nothing moves the heart of God than when a people come together and they say, it is time for me to stand in the gap for my family. It is time for me to stand in the gap for my people, for the church, for the body of Christ and begin to pray. God does not despise the prayer of intercession. Intercession is so important in the life of the body, in the life of God's children. I hope you understand. If you pay attention to the uh, Acts of Apostles, you see that they were always praying, not just for themselves. They were praying for the repentance of all peoples. They were praying for everyone, for them to encounter Jesus. You know how many prayers that were made before Jesus appeared to Paul? The Bible didn't tell us how many prayers that were made, but we know that the church stood in the gap praying. And God used their prayers to rescue Paul from darkness and made him an apostle. I hope we, we remember, of course, many cases in the scripture. So many places, even in Acts chapter 12, we continue to remember the case where it Herod was able to kill. You know, persecution was so heavy in the in the among the you know the early Christians, and even James was beheaded. And Herod saw that this was so pleasing to the Jews, and he went and grabbed Peter and put him in the prison, waiting to kill him the next day. But the church was praying, standing in the gap for Peter, and that was what saved the life of Peter because God in heaven he had the prayers of the saints and the saints and or deployed even an angel to come into the prison to deliver our brother Paul, I mean brother Peter, who was in pain, who was in trouble, and through that prayer of the saints, somebody who was in jail, somebody who was in captivity, was set free. I don't feel like praying for somebody right now. I don't know whether it's a family that's in captivity. I don't know whether it's somebody whose business is in captivity. Pray this night that even as we begin to pray, even as we have come to our own upper room and begin to pray tonight, we are praying that every chain be broken tonight in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Every apron be broken tonight. Every cord be broken tonight. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says that when Samson was tied with a rope, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him and the rope was broken into pieces as though it was like a flax. And the power of God was able to break every chain in the life of Samson. So even as we pray tonight, Yes, my Lord, let every chain be broken tonight. Is there a family that is tied around? Is there a family that is tied to captivity? Is there a family that is tied to a tree of non-achievement? Even as we begin to pray now, Haribo, Sheriba, Sakata, let the power of God begin to break them into pieces. Begin to break the chain right now. Let somebody open your mouth and begin to pray. Every prayer in the upper room will always enter the heart of God. Every prayer in the upper room will always bring down the 
power of God. Open your mouth and begin to pray. For grace has brought us to a place of upper room tonight. So that somebody will be set free tonight. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. If there are a people to pray, that is a God to answer. Let my people begin to pray. Begin to vibrate in prayer. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Pray now, pray now, pray now. The Bible tells us on a certain day, there was a donkey. There was a donkey. There was a donkey. A donkey that was tied to a tree. And this donkey was there. And the Bible says that even the cult of the donkey, the baby of the donkey, the child of the donkey was also there with the mother. And behold, Jesus told the disciples, when you see that very very donkey that was tied to the tree when you see that donkey tell the owner of the donkey that the master has a need for that very donkey Haribo Shekete Jesus remember the donkey the donkey that was tied to a tree and when that donkey was remembered Jesus it was a time to set the donkey free and when the disciples came to the owner and said the master has a need for the donkey and the donkey was set free that day the donkey was set free I said that day the donkey was set free even the baby was set free. I pray tonight we say somebody who is tied to a tree of stagnation. Even as we begin to pray tonight, hey, Marcasa, Kata, the Lord has a need for you tonight. The Lord who had a need for the donkey, he has a need for you tonight. He has a need for your business tonight. He has a need for your hair tonight. He has a need for your family tonight. He has a need for your children tonight. In the name of Jesus, is there a mother that is tied to a donkey? Is there a mother that is tied to a tree? Is there a character that is tied to a tree, a tree. Is there a ministry that is tied to a tree? Even as the people of God begin to pray tonight, that the very cord shall be broken tonight. Let the cord be broken tonight. Lift up your voice and pray. This is a time to pray to a carable secretary. Pray now, pray now, pray now. Let the power of God locate you tonight. The donkey shall be free tonight. Who is the donkey the Lord talking about? In the name of Jesus, the donkey shall be set free. Is us. Pray now, pray now, pray now. Yes, my Lord. The Lord has a need for the donkey. The Lord has a need for the ministry. The Lord has a need for the destiny. The Lord has a need for your life. How can the Lord be glorified when your life is in a dungeon? How can the, life, the Lord be glorified when your life is tied down? How can you do as Praise for the Lord. When your destiny is tied down, lift up your voice and begin to pray. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Every rope of captivity, let them be broken tonight. Any person in a spiritual prison, even at the voice of the word of God, let the chain be broken tonight. The bed shall be set free tonight. The bed shall be set free from the snare. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and pray. Let my people begin to pray now. Is us. Pray, 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 pray. I say, don't give up. I say, begin to pray. I say, don't give up. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, Karabosa. Let the light begin to shine. Let the light begin to shine. The light of grace, the light of grace. When the light is shine upon you, when the light is shine upon your family, the prison gate is open now. When the light is shining the prison, the prison gate is open now. In the name of Jesus. Even the time of Peter and the Bible message declared to us when the angel came to the prison even the chains holding Peter down the chains we are broken tonight the chains we are broken that day even as we begin to pray let the chains holding us down be broken tonight in the name of Jesus is somebody praying now lift up your voice and pray is us. Pray, 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 pray. In Acts 16, verse 25, and the Bible says, in the midnight, in the midnight, Paul and Silas were singing hymns, and the power of God came down, and God deployed an angel to come to the, he came to the place of the prison, and he was able to break into pieces, even the cords, even the chains, even the yoke that tied Paul and Silas to down, and the yoke be broken in the name of Jesus. Even those in the prison, people who are not even connected to them, people who are sharing the same ordeal with them, people who were collectively in captivity, they were broke, they were set free because the chain was broken. They were set free because God heard their prayers. They were set free because the angel of God came. I said tonight in the name of Jesus, let the angel of God locate you and begin to open the door now in the name of Jesus. Let somebody pray now. Lift up your voice and pray. 
is ours. Pray now. Don't give up in prayer. Don't give up in prayer. In the name of Jesus. Hey, Mark, Sakata. We are calling upon the Blessed Mother, the Mother of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that wonderful intercessor. Let her join us in prayer. Let her join her lips with our lips. In the name of Jesus. Even now, we join our lips with the prayers of the church. That even as we begin to pray, as we are united with the prayers of all the masses of our throughout the whole world, every door, every door, every Every door, doors of captivity, doors of sickness, doors of stagnation, doors of dungeon that have held people captive by the power in the name of Jesus be broken tonight. It is time for people to be free. Be broken tonight. It is time for people to be free in the name of Jesus. I say, let somebody begin to pray, vibrate in our prayer in the name of Jesus. Oh Jesus, pray, 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 pray. Let my people pray. The Bible says in the lateness of the night, the angel came and the light was shone in the prison and the chains were broken. Even tonight, let that same angel appear in the place of captivity, appear in a place where a family is held in captivity, where there is collective captivity. Let the angels of God, let them begin to pay you a visit. Let them take their heavenly GPS and locate your coordinates now and locate where you are now and let the atmosphere begin to change. It used to be the atmosphere of imprisonment. It used to be called the atmosphere of captivity. But now there's an atmosphere of light. It is an atmosphere of light. In the name of Jesus, darkness cannot prevail against light. Let somebody be set free tonight. Is somebody praying right now? And the Bible says, Jeremiah chapter 40 verse 4, Today, the chain on your wrist is broken. The chain on your your wrist is broken in the name of Jesus. Is there a chain on your wrist? Are there chains on your legs? Are there chains along your loins? Today, even as we pray, today, even as we pray, let the chain be broken tonight. Let the chain begin to melt now under the apostolic anointing in the name of Jesus. For the Bible says in Isaiah 10, verse 27, by reason of the anointing, by reason of the oil, every chain will be broken now in the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus, the Lord has come today to remember his people standing in the gap. Very, very, very important. <laughs> if we don't stand in the gap, we lose a generation. If we don't stand in the gap, we lose the weak. We lose them. We lose the blessings that God himself has given to us. If we do not stand in the gap, standing in the gap is not a matter of convenience. It's a necessity. Look at this. Look at the Syrophoenician woman. Look at her. She had never been to any prayer group. There was no church, no synagogue in her land. In fact, all around her, even in her family, were idols, bars. This was the, the environment, you know, the landscape of her, her life. There was no prophet connected to her life because she didn't come from Israel. She didn't come from the chosen people of God. Yet, her spirituality, her character continued to teach us the virtues that God is looking for in each and every one of us. Standing in the gap! <laughs> oh my goodness. You see that generation that failed to stand in the gap for the youths, for the young ones. That generation is, is finished, I'm telling you. But Jesus says, I am looking for someone who will stand in the gap. I hope you remember uh, Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 30. He says, I am looking for someone. This is God talking. I am looking for someone who will stand in the gap that the land may be saved, that I shall not destroy the land. So even God himself is looking for a people who will stand in the gap. Will he find one in you tonight? Will he find one in your family tonight? Will he find one 
in your soul in this ministry tonight god wants people who will stand in the gap so if we make ourselves available if you make ourselves those who will stand in the gap god will be pleased he is always pleased he's looking for intercessors because these are the people that wage you know the anger of god from reaching even the people i am looking for someone this is god talking if it were a man talking that's a different thing but this is god saying i am looking for someone who will stand in the gap that the land may be saved that is how powerful standing in the gap is that is how powerful intercession is family that live without prayer to tell you the truth, I don't know how they survive. <laughs> I don't know how they survive, I'm telling you. The only, the only thing I can explain is that God's grace is sufficient for them. Because God, is, God shows uh, you know, immensity of graces of mercy upon his children. God is looking for someone to stand in the gap. This is how powerful standing in the gap is. And if you know that standing in the gap is so powerful this way, then we have no option than to become people who will stand in the gap. Don't ask me, what do I stand in the gap for? Go on your knees. Let the one who owns the church, Jesus, let the, the, the Holy Spirit minister to you. They need to pray for. That there are, there are so many needs. In fact, there is no end to the needs to pray for. We need to be people of God. God shows mercy when people are standing in the gap. His anger can be abetted. I'm telling you. In fact, he can even turn his anger, okay, on judgment into mercy. Just because he found someone. He's not even looking for so many people. Just someone. If I find someone, I will save the land. <laughs> I hope you remember the case of Abraham, right? How he stood in the gap, you know, for uh, Lot and his family and how all that happened that saved the family. So God is still in the business of looking for people who will stand in the gap. We have so much to to gain when we stand in the gap for, you know for for people who have so much to gain so the lord is talking to us tonight we ought to stand in the gap so let this remind us that in the course of you know lovingly taking another person's burden to the lord in prayer we ourselves bring ourselves into the presence of god let me ask you this side of Phoenician woman we're talking about, do you not see that this woman, you know, she on, on taking the pain of this daughter to Jesus, that she herself found herself in the presence of Jesus. Another person's problem brought her to the presence of Jesus. That is how powerful intercession is. It brings us to the presence of God. It gives us opportunity to come to the presence of God. You see, the person we are praying for is not there with us physically. But by our prayer, we bring that person into the presence of God. But even we ourselves also enjoy the presence of God. We bask in his glory. So anywhere you look at it, you are gaining. It's all plus, you know. It's all plus when we are interceding for somebody. When we stand in the gap, we do ourselves good. We do ourselves good, I'm telling you. Is there anything that is better or more glorifying or something? Is there anything more uh, praiseworthy than being in the presence of God? Is there anything more rewarding than being in the presence of God? I cannot think of anyone. And that is why... You see, the psalmist is saying the other day, the moment I heard, let us go to the house of the Lord, I was filled with joy. Why? Because he knew that by being in the presence of God, that no arrow will hit him. That is a place of insurance, divine insurance. That is a place of protection. That is a place where the word of God tells us, of course, in Job 1 verse 10, a hedge of protection. That is a place of complete 360 degrees round fence of protection in the presence of God. 
You cannot ex exchange the presence of God for anything and be wise. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Give me all the crude oils in, in, in Saudi Arabia and it, let the, 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 the presence of God be by the side and ask me which one do I choose. Let me make it publicly clear right here in this message that I will choose the presence of God. Because if you have the praise of God, you have everything. I hope you know that. Remember Matthew 6, verse 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And every other thing will add to you. Even the good oil will be added unto you. Good health, everything. So if we hold firm the presence of God, we know we have victory. And this is one of the merits of intercession. Standing in the gap. Standing in the gap. So, my dear friends in Christ, we ought to stand in the gap, not when it is convenient, but all the time we ought to stand in the gap. And when we do so, God says he will be glorified. God will be honored. And then when we enter, encounter the Lord, it is going to become a big blessing for us. So, my dear friends in Christ, let us seek the face of God. You see, in this ministry, we have the intercessors of this very ministry. And what do they do? They are always interceding, standing in a gap for a people they don't know. They keep praying hours upon hours. Most of the time, people are sleeping. And they are, they are still praying. And I tell you, yeah, even as much as they are praying, but look, your problems also bring them to the presence of God. Because when they come to the presence of God, when they come to the place of prayer, that is also an opportunity to come to the presence of God. So I want to encourage you to be an intercessor. Be somebody who is standing in the gap. You don't have to be an intercessor uh, by virtue of registering your membership in the minute in the uh, in the intercessor of this ministry before you will call an intercessor. Every person, every Christian ought to be an intercessor, ought to be a person of prayer. For when we do that, then we are like Jesus, praying. Literally, Jesus looked at Peter and said, Peter, I saw the enemy, I saw the devil, he came to sift you, but I have prayed for you. Even the blessed mother, the mother of Jesus, she herself is an intercessor. Remember John 2, verse 1 to 11, the role she played at Cana when the one finished. She went the interceding for the people. But our friends, when we pray for people who are outside, people who are in darkness, people who have nobody to pray for them, like the Saddle Financial Woman, like her own daughter, I tell you, by our prayer, by our faithful prayer, we bring them into the inside of Christ. We bring them into the fold. We bring them into the place of Jesus. We bring them into the presence of God, my dear friends in Christ. By standing in the gap, we make an outsider an insider. So I want tonight, I want to encourage those mothers who are tired and heartbroken because they are watching someone they love and someone that they care suffer. Don't give up. The sorrow of Christian woman never gave up. Don't give up bringing your request to Jesus in prayer. The Lord is seeing you. You never know the day that the Lord will say to you, the Saddle Phoenician woman never knew that on a particular day that Jesus was going to hear her, that Jesus was going to have to have an encounter with her, that she was going to encounter Jesus. She never knew that. She was rather crying, and the Lord met her. Friends, we can experience God more profoundly just by intercession. We can experience God more profoundly as we wrestle with obstacles, with questions, with doubts, with uncertainties of others. Others can experience the life of Christ and growth in faith as we seek the face of God. You never know the day that you will come to heaven and God will reward you. God will tell you, my son, welcome. For you have won so much souls for me. You have brought so much souls to heaven. And you may be wondering, ah, but master, when did I do this? And Jesus may surprise to tell you that when you lock up yourself in your closet and you are praying for repentance of souls, you are praying for revival, you are praying for that soul, that person that is walking in darkness, that that prayer was able to make that person to become a saint. Look at that person now, he's in heaven. And Jesus will tell you this and say, this is why I love you. You are always standing in a gap. You have been standing in a gap. My dear friends in Christ, standing in the gap is needed, highly needed, highly. God is looking for 
his ambassadors, those that he sent to the world to go and preach, to go and pray, to go and represent him. He's looking for them. Unfortunately, many have gone after their own businesses, forgetting the Lord's business, standing in the gap, standing in the gap. Are you going to make up your mind this night to stand in the gap? If you will pray, if you would pray, God will answer. Power is in prayer. Great power. I remember one day I was praying one night with my wife. And all of a sudden, the Lord showed a vision where a certain Indian woman, I don't know her, you know, she just appeared and crying. I know what she said. Please pray for my son that he may repent. Of course, that changed our prayer point. We began to pray. That woman may, may, could be in India. The son may be in India or some other country. But you see, she she needed prayer and the spirit of god such places in the world and they found the the the, the prayer of uh, of uh, your little brother as a prayer that he wants to use to save that soul and even though i don't know them i tell you that prayer was not in vain because it was a prayer organized by the holy spirit it was the holy spirit that opened the eyes to see the need of that woman and connected her into the prayer that is beauty in prayer that's the power in prayer I'm telling you. So it is a beautiful even now. We are connecting ourselves to the prayers of the church all over the world. We are connecting ourselves to the prayers of all the legion of Mary all over the world. To the prayers of the saints. The prayers going on in the monasteries, in the seminaries. We are uniting the prayer of this night to the prayers of all of God's people. Even with the prayers of the angels and saints in heaven. We are uniting our prayers with them. So that we form a body of Christ. Generating a smoke of prayer. Let the smoke of prayer begin to rise this night. In the name of Jesus. That even as we unite ourselves with the prayers of all the masses offered throughout the whole world. Let the smoke of prayer begin to rise from the house of prayer. In the name of Jesus. As the smoke of prayer is rising. Let the wonders begin to happen. Let the walls of Jericho begin to fall in the name of Jesus. Let the dry rivers begin to flow again. Let the dry rivers begin to come back in the name of Jesus. According to Isaiah chapter 12 and 3 and the Bible says, with joy I will draw water from the wells of salvation. Even as we begin to pray, let there be well in your water. Let there be water in your well. Let there be water in your well in the name of Jesus. May your well not be on dry in the name of Jesus. Thank you mighty Jesus. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Standing in the gap. I wish the, the, the Sarah Felicia woman could come out this night and I, I mean, I, I feel like a hugging her, I'm telling you. What a virtuous woman. What a wonderful woman. <laughs> Not a Christian, but her life is a sermon today. You see that? Not even a Jewess, but her life is a message this night to talk to Christians. The problem of her daughter made her to begin to seek the face of God. Did she find the face of God? Yes. Yes. If you take another person's problem upon yourself, you will see the face of God. I'm telling you. <laughs> Look at the way she was wrestling with God in prayer. When she met Jesus and she began to pour her heart into the Lord. Uh, have mercy on me for I, my daughter is demon afflicted. Jesus did not even say a word. Yes, yeah, she did not give up. Wrestling. 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 <laughs> you see? She continued. Even the disciples of Jesus now told Jesus, this woman is pestering us. Command us to cast her away. This woman did not even give up. She, she didn't even give up. She kept wrestling, 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 never giving up, fighting to have her testimony, fighting to have a breakthrough, fighting, never giving up. <laughs> and then Jesus now told her, you know what? I, I am sent for the household of Israel. Uh, she, she didn't even give up. She continued to pass her, have mercy on me. In fact, at that point, she now knelt down. The Bible says she went on her knees and they began to cry to the Lord. 
Then the Lord answered her, Look, listen, you're asking. This is a bread meant for the for the for the chosen people of Israel, for the house of Israel. Uh, it is not fair to take this bread that is meant for the people of God, for my own people, and give it to people like you, to give it to people like that are dogs. For it is not fair to take the bread of the people of God and cast it onto the dogs. Even that was heartbreaking. Yet this woman did not give up. Jesus, all I'm saying is have mercy on me. Please have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Always repeating this. Have mercy on me. <laughs> and Jesus couldn't stand it again. Because this woman had passed the test. It's like playing a chase. You know, I don't know how to play chess, but those who play chess, I know that, you know, the, 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 the one will cast the cast the, the card. Another person will, will play the cast the card. Another person will, you know, play another card. They keep you know, casting card after card, and before you know what's happening, there is one card that I understand that is the queen of it all, the king of it all, and when that one is, is cast, ah, uh, whoever casts it becomes the winner. As if to say, you know, that card is the last card. The last card. And the game came to a close. In, in, in a sense, this woman was playing a card with Jesus, really. I'm telling you, she was playing card with Jesus. Look at the way the card was going, you know, keeping silent. Disciples saying, cast her away. Jesus saying, you know, you're not meant for, you're not like us. You're not like an Israel. I'm, cast, I'm, I'm here for the people of Israel. And Jesus, the other way, said, okay, you are, you are even like a dog. Um, I cannot give you what is meant for the people of God and put it and give it to the dogs. Uh, look at the way that everything was against her. Yet, this woman keep playing her card. Jesus will play card. He will, she will play her own card. Did she keep doing? until she played the last card the last card that brought out the fullness of her faith her faith was shown like light and the light was able to break the darkness break the walls of limitations and uh, all the embargo on her life on her child on her family all of them were lifted because she persevered till she played the last card I could have titled this message, playing the last card. <laughs> you see, my dear friends in Christ, maybe you don't know you are playing a card right now. You know, you don't know that for the past five years, for the past 10 years, you have been playing a card with Jesus. But don't give up, because I tell you, if you keep playing that card, the right card, one day it will be the last card when the light of God will shine and God will say it's enough. The last card. The last card is for the winner. Jesus saw in her a winner. Jesus saw in her somebody who qualified for virtue. Someone who qualified for the bread that belongs to the people of Israel. And she received that bread from the one who is the bread of life. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Her faith did it. Profound faith. Let me ask you, are you a wrestler? I mean, do you wrestle with God? You see, don't think that wrestling with God is, is something bad. Jacob wrestled with God. I hope you know that. Rest unless you change my name, I'm not going to leave you. You must bless me. You must bless me. That was the prayer of uh, of uh, of Jacob, and we know that he persevered. He he held God tenaciously. I'm not leaving you. You're not going anywhere. And the day was about to break. He said, I'm not going anywhere until you said to me. You must say to me. I like I like I like the way the Bible puts this now. I think in Isaiah chapter sixty six verse seven and eight says that as soon as Zion traveled in prayer, that she brought forth her children. You cannot bring forth testimonies unless you travel in prayer. Go to the side of Phoenician woman and learn how to travel. Let us go to her and learn how to be wise, how to be, how to have faith, how to restore, how to restore those who restore in prayer, those who go on their knees and restore with God in prayer. They have victory. They have victory. Not those who are fighting God. No, wrestling with God on their knees. These are generals. These are warriors spiritual warriors these are defenders of the faith look at the way abraham wrestled with god when god was about to go and destroy the the the, the city of uh of Sodom and gomorrah uh, and the plan of heaven was already set to wipe down the city kill everybody bring an end to that evil civilization but what happened 
Abraham began to lobby. Hey, what if you find the 30 people? Are you going to destroy them? God said, well, no, I'm not going to destroy. Uh, what if you find 10, 20 people? Uh, what if you find 10 people? You know, he keep lobbying, wrestling, you know. Uh, he keep playing the chase until he came to the end when the Lord, when the last card was played. That last card was what saved the family of Lot. You remember that, right? Intercession. What Abraham did was intercession. Not nothing. In, that is standing in the gap. Is a virtue. It saves not only life, but lives. It saves not only a family, but a people, a nation. The Lord says, if I will find someone who will stand in the gap, I will, the land will be saved. The land. The land means a people. The land will be saved. Remember 2 Corinthians 7 verse 14. You know, if the people who are called by my name, if they will stand in the gap and, pray and repent of their evil ways and cry unto me, I will answer them. I will hear them. This is the Lord talking. God is busy looking for intercessors, people who are destined to stand in the gap. Power, 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 power in standing in the gap. You cannot know the virtues of standing in the gap and despise this virtue. You have to be a wrestler. A wrestler on your knees. You save a generation when you are a wrestler on your knees. Look at look at it, um, look at Jacob. She re he wrestled to the point that when he won, in fact, I believe that the angel had to had to exercise the, high, the last card. He, he carried, it, you know, to win him because look. Jacob was really fully out, not allowed the angel to go anywhere unless you bless me. You can you can engage God, you know, you can engage God um in prayer. You can engage him. That's what thing. you can engage God in prayer. Look at how God changed his identity. Look at how God changed his name from Jacob to Israel. Promotion. Jacob is a name, he's just a person, one person. Israel is not just one person again. Israel is a nation. God lifted him, promoted him from a person to a nation. Why? Because he, he stood in a gap. He wrestled with God. He, he knew his right. You see, if you know who you are in, in God's presence, in the family of God, I tell you, you get testimonies. So I pray this night that God will elevate somebody, that God will elevate a family, that God will elevate a family in the name of Jesus. Look at the way God elevated our brother, Rika Sakata. He elevated Jacob and brought him to the place of a nation. He brought him to the place of Israel in the name of Jesus. May God elevate somebody today. Cry to the Lord to elevate you in the name of Jesus. Ask him to elevate you. Yes, my Lord. Is somebody crying? Praying to the Lord now. Let God change your spiritual level. Let God change your spiritual address in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Let the power of the Holy Spirit be heavy upon you tonight in the name of Jesus. To use you to do greater things in the name of Jesus. Pray, 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 pray. Let my people begin to pray. I said, don't give up. I said, don't give up in the name of Jesus. Power of intercession. Standing in the gap. You see, I hope you know that when Jacob was running away from the house of his father, right? The reason why he was running away because his, his brother Esau, <laughs> whom he took his birthright, was after he wanted to kill him. So he ran to the house of Laban. We all know that story in Genesis chapter 27 and chapter 28. Very long, you know, story. But you see, the anger of Esau was still so heavy against Jacob, waiting for the day that he would meet him and kill him. Now, when eventually Esau saw Jacob, go and check what the Bible says. He embraced him. It was fellowship. You know why? <laughs> Esau had a problem with Jacob, not, not, not Israel. He said, uh, even though it may look like a comedy, but the fact is that when God changed his identity, you know, his, his enemy before will become his friends. You know, he, he saw, had a problem, had a, had a conflict with, with, with uh, Jacob, but not with Israel. 
You see, when God elevates you, people who are your enemies at the level when you were Jacob, they cannot remain your enemies when you become Israel. Because they may have a problem with Jacob, but not Israel. God will change your identity and you see glory manifesting in a special way. Intercession. So no matter the level, we have to go through in order to stand in the gap. Do it and do it wholeheartedly and profoundly because the reward is profound. Wrestle in prayer. Wrestle with obstacles. Wrestle with questions. Wrestle with doubts. Wrestle with uncertainties of life. On behalf of somebody else, there's no way you will not be rewarded for that. There's no way. Others can experience even the life of Jesus because of your intercession. Somebody in prison will come out of prison because of your intercession. Somebody's faith will grow because of your intercession. We don't have an idea of what God does with our prayers, especially prayers for other people. You see, because when we pray for other people, it's not selfishness. So without standing in the gap for her daughter, I mean, that side of financial woman couldn't have been able to experience the, 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 the deliverance of her daughter. It was because she stood in the gap for the daughter. That was why that deliverance came to the daughter, came to the family. Does that sound encouraging, right? It does, right? Okay. So what you have to do now is pray for those in your family. Pray for those in other families. Pray for people, whether you know them or not. Stand in a gap. This is how powerful standing in a gap is. It was able to cast out the demon in that daughter of that woman. Is God talking to somebody? And even though the Bible didn't tell us the problems of this woman that got solved because she came to the place of Jesus, but we know that the mountains melt in the place of the Lord, right? So in other words, there's no way this woman will come to the place of the Lord for another person problem and God will not reward her. Those who pray for others, they themselves are doubly blessed, doubly blessed. Intercession. Look at those who are faithful in the, in the, with the spirit of intercession. Watch them always vibrant god goes with them the glory of god is upon them look into their eyes you see light <laughs> intercession now but let me ask this question do you think that this woman even though she had such a great faith because this faith she had didn't come when she met jesus that faith was there before she met Jesus. So, do you think that with all her faith, she would have seen her daughter healed without taking the matter to Jesus? The answer is no. There's no way she would have seen her daughter healed without her going to Jesus. In other words, with all her faith, if she had not gone to Jesus, she would have limited even the power of God from reaching her daughter. She would have. I'm telling you. She would have limited God, even though that God wanted to heal her. How many times do we limit God, even when God wants to heal us? All that he wanted is our step of faith, but we don't have the faith. All he wanted is to, to, for us to come to, our, to, to him, and we don't come to him. And yet, we call ourselves Christians. We say, oh, I'm a Christian. Oh, my father uh, is a Catholic. Oh, I've been reading this Bible since I was born. Oh, I was baptized as a Catholic. God doesn't read that way. God is looking for people who know him. If you're a Catholic, you have to be a good one. <laughs> Amen? If you're a Christian, you have to be a good one. I want to make a case tonight. A simple case. And that case is this. That it is not God, you know, who is limited. No, God cannot be limited. God is unlimited. God is all-powerful. All-knowing, all you know, omniscient. God is everywhere, omnipresent. So he cannot be limited, yet we limit God. We limit his capacity, his, what he wants to do in us. We limit him. We limit our experience of his power because of our limited faith, because of our weak prayer, because of our cold-blooded uh, life of prayer, because of our lukewarmness. Many miracles have been aborted, not because God was not there, but because God did not find faith. This woman would have 
would have had her miracle aborted. The miracle of her child aborted if she had no faith. If she had not gone to Jesus. If she had not stood in the gap for the daughter. She wouldn't have had that testimony. Mother friends Christ. God doesn't need to be defended. Otherwise, I would have said, let me defend him tonight. But no one can defend him. He himself is on defense. However, I will make it clear tonight. It is not God that is limited. We know that. It is we ourselves that limit our experience of the omnipotence of God. We are the ones who limit the omnipotence of our God by our lack of faith. We are the ones. We are guilty, not our God. <laughs> Many deliverances have been aborted. Many deliverances have been limited because of weak faith. Our lack of faith, our slackness, you know, our, our, our laziness in prayer, you know, have been responsible for abortion of many miracles, for many miracles that have been aborted. Our lack of faith have delayed even profound miracles that heaven had decided to give to us. In fact, we constrain heaven by our lack of faith. And so the Lord says this night, I want you to come to me. I want you to open your heart. I want you to have a hug with me. God is not weak. I need to repeat that again. My God is not weak. If my God is your God, the Jesus Christ of Nazareth, born of the Blessed Virgin Mary, God, the second person of the Blessed Trinity, that might Jesus, the, the Trinity family, the family of the Trinity, God himself is not weak, but his people are weak. God is not weak. His people are weak. So we cannot blame God. We blame ourselves. <laughs> we cannot blame God. So, my dear friends in Christ, let all therefore be people of faith, people of strength, people of spiritual stamina to stand in the gap. I like this woman called Judith. If you don't have a complete Bible, you won't know about her. I'm telling you. <laughs> if you read uh, the book of Judith, chapter 13, you see a very, very interesting story of how God used Judith to save a. a a, a, a people of Israel, powerful warrior, just like Deborah in Judges uh, chapter 13. You see, such a powerful woman of prayer. And there was this enemy of Israel called uh, Holofenes. You know, Holofenes. Uh, Holofenes was a, a, a general, a general uh, against the people of Israel. And in Israel, they were all afraid of him. All the armies of Israel were afraid. All of them are afraid of Holofenes. But you see, Judith went to God in prayer. If you take your time and go to Judith chapter 13, verse 8, you see her prayer there. Very interesting prayer. I don't have time to go through all that. But prayed and put her trust in the Lord and said, Lord, I trust in you. Save, use me to save my people. And so she now, by that prayer, she went to God in prayer. You see that? And now look at the woman, a woman, not even a general, not even like a general, not even like a man, the woman. She went to the to the place where uh, Holofernes was lying uh, and they uh, took the sword of Holofernes and they cut off the head of Holofernes. Let me tell you, Judy did not even go to this general with, with a sword, not even with any weapon, except the power of God. I mean, even David went to, with, against Goliath with at least a, a weapon, the, 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 the slingshot, the catapult, and the stone. But Judith went against the, a general, not even with a weapon. And yet, she came to the people of Israel with the head of their arch enemy. How do you explain it? She went to God in prayer. She went to God. She took the matter and go to God. She didn't go to, to, to God for herself. She went standing in the gap for the people of Israel. And God saw a need for deliverance. And God used her to deliver Israel. Very interesting story. Go read the book of Judith. Take your time and read it. You'll see the bulk of this woman. That today, do you know that she celebrated Israel as a mother in Israel? 
as a mother in Israel, Judith. How can you be celebrated if you have not killed a giant? Many of us have not even killed a worm or even a rat, spiritual rats, you know, spiritual worms that don't even have teeth. I mean, the worms don't have teeth, you know. Some of us cannot even kill them. Little demons that cause headaches, you are afraid of them. How can you stand against Goliath? My dear friends, we need to rise up in prayer. We need to be like Judith. Stand up in prayer. You say that we live in a world that despise, you know, women and say, oh, these women are very weak. How can you see weakness in Judith? God was with her. She stood in the gap for the nation. Today, she is honored as a mother in Israel. You want to be honored by heaven? You want heaven to honor you? Then stand in the gap. All the people that stand in the gap, God honor all of them one by one. He honors them one by one. Not, not even sometimes, always. How can we destroy the hollow fairness in our families? Unless, like Judith, we, we stand the gap and pray vehemently for our generation. But many of us are having romance with lukewarmness in prayer. Romance with lukewarmness towards God. Romance with, with unpiety. God says, no, I want my people to have fire in their blood. <laughs> our God is fire, right? I think the other day, Jesus was saying that, um, how, I wish the, how I wish the fire were already burning. He wants to see the fire of prayer in Israel. He wants to see the fire of prayer in Zion. He wants to see the fire of prayer in our lives. In her victory for the family of Israel, we learn on the power of determination in prayer, boldness, tenacity to go to God in prayer. And I tell you, God will never despise those who come to him, trusting in him. Deliverance will come to them, my friend. Look at the prayer of Judith. We have to read Judith chapter 13, verse 7. And you see where the Judith was praying, very simple prayer. And she said, give me strength today that I may be an instrument to deliver your people. And God did it. And if you do so, God will do the same thing for you. She went forth in the power of the Spirit and was able to destroy the arch enemy, slay the enemy, and carry the head of the enemy. My dear friends, there's no room for compromise. There's no room for weakness. No room for spiritual lessness in the kingdom of God. You cannot look at anything in heaven and see slothfulness. You cannot look at anything in heaven and see weakness. No. Strength is of heaven. And so we will come to them with our weakness. Their strength will come into us and use us to do exploits. The Bible may say clear to all that those who know the power of their God, they will do great exploits. Let us do great exploits. Let us not sleep. Can you imagine Judith going to kill the giant with, with sleepy eyes? She will get slaughtered there. Many of us are sleepy. <laughs> How can we save our families if we cannot be able to stand the gap? How can we save our nation if we fail to stand in the gap? How can there be revival in this generation if in this age those who God have sent as warriors are sleeping in the war field? How can this happen? How can they be resolved? Those who are supposed to turn the wheel of prayer when they are sleeping on the steering, how can they cannot crash? We need to wake up, brother. Sister, we need to wake up. The body of Christ shall do great exploits, but only by prayer. Only by prayer. We need to be people of prayer. We need to stand the gap. Because when we stand the gap, then we move the power of God to places, to nations, and things will begin to change. So let us be pure prayer and let us pray perseveringly. Let us pray prevailingly. Let us pray always, constantly, never giving up. For when we do so, God will never despise us. Do not forget the side of Phoenician woman, a great mother, a great woman, a woman of prayer, a woman who wrestles with God in prayer. And so, my dear friends, tonight, even now, we are going to wrestle with God in prayer. We are going to cry to the Lord in prayer. So at this point in time, whatever place you are, I want you to get yourself, uh, arm yourself and get ready for prayer. Cry to the Lord at this moment in time. Ask God to use you this night to bring the destruction of every giant to your family that they be leveled down at this moment in time. 
in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Rakarabu Sekete. Jesus. We are connecting this prayer now to the prayers of all the angels and saints in heaven. We are connecting this prayer with the prayers of all the parents and grandparents all over the world that are crying because of the situation of their children. We are bringing this prayer to them. We are using the prayer to connect them to the altar of God in prayer. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, we are united this prayer with the prayers of prayer groups all over the world that are praying for their own needs and needs of others. We are uniting all the children of this generation to this prayer right now that the power of God will begin to locate these children, even as the power of God located the child of the side of Phoenician woman. Let the power of God, even this night as we pray, begin to locate all the children all over the world that are under the negative side of internet games. People, children them who are under uh, the spirit of drugs and addiction. Let the Lord deliver them tonight. We stand against the spirit of pornography, the spirit of wrong relationships that have been able to entangle the use of our time. Even as we begin to pray, I say even as we begin to pray, oh my goodness, I say even as we begin to pray, let the shackles be broken tonight. Every demonic influence upon the children, let them be broken now. Every spirit of rebellion Rebellion, spirit of lewdness, spirit of laziness, spirit of greed, spirit of confusion, spirit of helplessness, spirit of anxiety, spirit of depression that is against and upon the children of our time. We are standing against such spirits right now. Let the power of God that delivered the daughter of the sorrow of the woman, let that power begin to locate our children now and begin to deliver them now. Let the oil of deliverance rest upon our children now. Let the oil of grace begin to come upon them now. All the children that are demonized let the power of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, let the blood of Jesus Christ begin to deliver them now. Let that demon begin to live right now. In the name of Jesus, we command every rebel spirit, every clandestine spirit, every marine spirit that have taken over the children of our time. Let the water of God, the blood of Jesus, begin to melt all the enterprise of the wicked against our children. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Is somebody praying now? We decree that the children of this generation they shall become instruments in the heart of God. Let God deliver them tonight. Let, I'm moving from darkness to light. In the name of Jesus. Let the shackles against them be broken. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. They shall carry the love of God. They shall demonstrate the love of God. In the name of Jesus, let us pray now. Let us pray now. Children of God all over the world, lift up your voice and begin to pray. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. It's us. Let us invest in prayer. Let us invest in prayer. Invest in prayer. Invest in prayer. Unto and upon the children of this generation. Let us make a prayer investment upon our children now. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and pray. Pray that our children shall be prayerful. In the name of Jesus. That our children shall be people of faith. They shall be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. In the name of Jesus. People of fire. People of power. They shall be be like a Daniel in the name of Jesus. Pray, 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 pray. Arabarare, is somebody praying now? Lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. Cry to the God in heaven to locate our children tonight in the name of Jesus. Children everywhere all over the world, let the blood of Jesus begin to locate them now. Begin to deliver them now. Even in their sleep, may the blood of Jesus locate them. May the blood of Jesus sanctify their spiritual world. Begin to sanctify their dreams. Begin to sanctify their thoughts. Begin to sanctify their visions in the name of Jesus. Oh Jesus, pray now, pray now, pray now. Ayababare, let the power of God flow. Is somebody pray now? Pray now, pray now, pray now. In the name of Jesus, Jesus, lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. Any child in the mouth of the lion, let all you this prayer to begin to deliver them now. To begin to snatch them from the mouth of the lion, from the jaws of the lion. We cannot lose our children. We cannot lose our children. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice and pray. Every enterprise. The wicked to deceive the children of the generation to put them in a place of darkness. We cancel that enterprise, we cancel that agenda in the name of Jesus. 
Aïe, 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 aïe. Prêt, 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 prêt. Let somebody pray, let somebody pray. In the name of Jesus. Are you praying right now? We release the blood of Jesus into their subconscious mind, into their eyes, into their ears, that they will begin to love Christian songs in the name of Jesus. They will begin to meditate on things that are defying, on things that are praiseworthy. In the words of Philippians 4, verse 8, Hey, my carabosa, we are praying that from today, is us that in the words of Philippians 4 verse 8 that our children shall begin to think those things that are noble, those things that are true, those things that are praiseworthy, those things that are noble in the name of Jesus, those things that are uplifting, those things that are admirable, those things that are lovely. Let them be the things that the children of this generation will begin to think. Let them think like Jesus. Let them have the mind of Jesus. Yes, my Lord, even though they may be sleeping now. But we are speaking into their spiritual world. We speak into their dreams. Let them encounter Jesus. Even in their dreams. Even in their visions. Let them encounter Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Is us. Is somebody pray now? Pray, 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 pray. Hey, my casa kata. Whatever thing that is deceiving them, everything that they are finding joy doing, that is not the will of God. Through this prayer, we are severing our children from those things. We are severing the children of this generation from everything that is ungodly. In the name of Jesus, we pray into their hearts that they will hate wickedness. We pray into their hearts that they will hate evil power. In the name of Jesus. That they shall hate occultism in the name of Jesus. That they shall hate drunkenness. That they shall hate evil. They shall hate the words of darkness. Instead, in the words of Philippians, or in the words of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11, may they be the ones that shall expose the works of darkness in the name of Jesus. In somebody pray now, lift up your voice and pray. Is us. Let there be no confusion in their lives. In the name of Jesus. Let the power of God be upon them. May there be people of love. May there be people of faith. May God shape them tonight with this prayer. In the name of Jesus. Those that are losing hope, may God put hope in them. In the name of Jesus. Are you praying, brother? Brother, are you praying now? I say, lift up your voice and pray. In the name of Jesus. May God give them strength. Strength to say no to every evil, wicked enemy. In the name of Jesus, every person, any person coming into their circle as a friend, but is an enemy. May God help our children to say no to them. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Pray, 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 pray. May God help them to withstand temptation. Let God strengthen them to withstand temptation. In the name of Jesus. To stand against temptation. And the Bible says, James chapter 4 verse 7, if you resist him, resist him and he will flee. May our children receive the stamina, receive the strength, the spiritual vigor to stand against wickedness, to stand against the power of devil, and they say no to them in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord, is somebody pray now. Let our children, Amen, Carabosa, let them not be part of this immoral age in the name of Jesus. Let them not be part of immorality in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord, let them not promote immorality in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord, Jesus, let the power of the blood of Jesus come upon our children. Yes, Lord, every mandate of the wicked, every mandate from the occultic kingdom to corrupt their mind, to interfere with their innocence. Father, we cancel that agenda. Father, we cancel that agenda in the name of Jesus. Father, preserve, preserve, preserve the innocence of our children. Every plan of the wicked to use the internet to corrupt their innocence. We cancel that tonight. We cancel that tonight in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Is us. We cover the hearts of our children with the blood of Jesus so that the enemy shall not use the internet to pierce the walls of their hands and the lodge in their hearts. We say no more in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Is somebody pray now? Pray, 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 pray. Is us. The enemy cannot take our. 
our children captive in the name of Jesus. Our children shall not be a snare in the hand of the enemy in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Father, we give you glory. We are surrounding now our children with the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May victory be upon our children. May they receive the mark of victory upon their destiny's victory, upon their footprints victory, upon their career victory, upon their classrooms victory in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit we pray with thanksgiving amen and amen and amen thank you jesus thank you lord we cover ourselves with blood of jesus and may the lord be glorified tonight for the wonders that he has done in jesus mighty name we pray amen and amen thank you jesus my dear friends tomorrow we are going to no longer being recorded we we'll cover this prayer of Jesus and we we'll decree that all the spirits that have gone out in the course of the prayer will never come to, to be again in our territory in Jesus' name. May the Holy Spirit take over those places where the spirits used to be. Let the Holy Spirit fill those places so that the enemy can never have a place again in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Tomorrow we are going to be reading and praying with Psalm 35. We offer Psalm 35 for children all over the world. Children all over the world. And may God bless us as we do that in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And please do not forget to share this message. This message is very important. Very important. So tomorrow, the Lord will continue to feed us from the table of the scripture in jesus name amen the grace may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and sweet fellowship of the holy spirit be with us now and forevermore amen we cover our brother with the blood of jesus we cover his family blood of jesus we cover his spiritual space with the blood of jesus and we decree that no enemy will ever encroach his territory in jesus name Amen. Surely his goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. And God bless you. And please do not forget that we are called to be standing in the gap. See you tomorrow, same time, same channel. And my name remains Brother. Oh, I'm going to go.